I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. Yo, We're I back. was just want to let you guys know, like I was at work today and I was thinking like, God, like I'm so fucking open, like all the time. Mm-hmm. No one passes it to me when I'm at work. <laughs> I'm just, I'm so open the whole time. No. It's, it's a bummer, man. It sucks. Yeah. Yeah, well, we're back. We got the whole crew again. First time in welcome. like a, a week. Yeah, hey, welcome back, Sam. Thank I you. Think, I'm, I think, I'm back from injury. Yeah, we were, we were all talking. I think we're all kind of battling. It's like mid-season, you know, we've all got our aches and pains. I think a lot of us, uh, the lower back pain is afflicting mm. us. But we're, we're, we're here. We're fighting through. Um, we're here in the pod. Like, like, Sam, like Sam had that uh, graphic up on Twitter. It was like, like combining all of the like <laughs> things and, which, which is the hardest sport and obviously uh, if you saw the graphic hosting an ultimate frisbee pod is number sure. one so top of the top yeah welcome right. what's up? Oh, welcome, welcome. Reese. welcome to the pod what's up boys hey. what's going on man oh you know just chill just had some dinner we have uh soul soul poker tonight oh some gambling yeah Okay. Who usually wins at Soul Poker? Um, Matthew Matthew Armour's won lately. He was the last big winner. Mick Walter is a shark. Joey Wiley, solid player. Oliver Fetter, though, he's he's the most winningest player. Even though he's only played two games this season, but he's he's won a lot <laughs> of poker. <laughs> what's the what's the setup? What stakes do you guys play? Uh, nothing crazy. Just like twenty dollar cash game. Um, but there's a few rebuys, you know, if you stick around for a couple hours, you can win some, some money for sure. Do you play, um, Texas Hold'em? We do. We do. <laughs> Only <Texas> assume. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it'd be kind of a travesty if, if you didn't, mm-hmm. but I just had to ask. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, real quick, let's introduce ourselves, which we've started to do now that we have guests. So I'm Sam, uh, and I'm open. <laughs> I'm Andrew. I'm Joe. Oh damn! <laughs> oh, All right, you got it. You got it. Andrew. No, no, no. I, I'm Joe. I'm gonna take this one. I'm, I'm sorry, but t- take a back seat there. Uh, no, I'm Andrew. Um, I'm uh, you know, coming at you from New Orleans, Louisiana, and I'm I'm open. All right, this time I'm Joe, and I'm coming at you from Washington D.C., and I'm so open. Yeah, uh, for the listeners out there, I'm Ryan. Uh, Reese, I'm coming at you a little more sober this time, but I'm still open. Nice. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm Reese. I'm uh, the, the 15th most likable player on the Austin Soul, and I'm open. Nice. Oh, yeah. Uh, you want to give like a, a quick background of how you like kind of got into Frisbee and how you got to the ADL on the Soul and everything like that? Sure, sure. Um, I, so my freshman year at UT... I was walking to my dorm and then you walk across Clark Field to get to Jester East Dormitory, which is where I lived my freshman year. And there's some guys throwing and they were throwing, you know, they were probably throwing like 40 yard flicks, but my mind was blown. I'd never seen anything like it. Like I played a bit of cross country ultimate Frisbee in high school. And like, you know, you just really just rip back hands as far as you can and no one catches it. Um, and I'm like, damn, this is crazy. Like, how are these guys doing that? I asked if I could throw with them. I was throwing with, with them for a little bit, and they were talking about tryouts. I'm like, oh, winter tryouts. And, like, this weekend, I went to tryouts. Uh, Calvin Lynn uh, saw me trying out. He cut me to the B group almost instantly. <laughs> and then I played my freshman year on the C team at Texas and then slowly, slowly grinded up. And then I was on the B team my sophomore year and then tough. And I played a tough for three years, had that – Snuck that fifth year in there in 2019, um, and then in my my first ADL game was in in 2018, and all of the Roughnecks players who were also in Double A were out like the last game of the season. They had already locked up the playoff spot, and were going to co cut for Double wide and they had a bunch of empty spots. And so I jumped in a Roughnecks game, got my first my first start, got a top ten play, my first win. <laughs> my first game which was sweet and then i played for the soul and should be 19 got in like four games lost all of them rough <laughs> rough like actual roster season for me um and then last year captain the soul this year 
demoted from captain, but moved to O-line, so it's a win, I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Really yeah. started from the bottom and made I it did. all the way up to top team of ADL plays a couple weeks ago. Yeah, speaking that was a that, fun one. Yeah, yeah, that was a good play. Um, yeah, speaking of, in honor of having you on our podcast, um, obviously when people think of you and the AUDL lately, they think of the uh, the buzzer beater catch and then the beer chug. Slamming so, beers, yep. Yep. Um, so I do have, I just have the clip. I'm just going to show it. Here we go. Take it to the backstory. How did why why are you chugging a beer here? Well, so this is Max had mess, messed up there in the quarter here. Yeah. Anyway, that's um, the play. So yeah, <laughs> take us through. Yeah, so we we got kind of lucky. They messed up there in the quarter. We called a quick timeout. Um, really shouldn't have been a timeout, like, but you know, rest we're learning you know we're all learning in this this young league um but we, there's like two seconds two two or three seconds left and just like i'll put all the tall people in the end zone mark's gonna throw some up let's see if we can get a quick one um and this dude is like bowman bowman you suck because madison has this like bar bar on the the that north end zone and i like look at him like wave at him like oh thanks man and he's like you're not gonna catch this you're gonna catch this like, yeah, you want bet you want better beer it catches, you want better drink it catches. He goes, Oh, I'll give you this beer right here. I'm like, all right. Um and, and my job was just, you know, wait, wait in the back and be the trash man, because that's who normally gets it. I had another one, uh, like a similar buzzer beater in the in our first Atlanta game. Um the no beers truck celebration, but it was a better catch, I think. It's like when that tipped off uh, whoever's fingers, I'm like, oh, I'm like, I'm like, oh, I have this the whole way. Caught it, started running for the guy. I couldn't find him at first. And then I just see him like holding the beer out. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah, in, in that, in that spirit, we actually all have a beer ready and we oh, were going nice. to, to chug a beer in your honor and you're welcome awesome. to join us if you want. <laughs> Oh shit! Hey, you want to give me ten seconds to grab a yeah, beer? Yeah, I'll join you. Okay. Of course, yeah, of course. Of course. Fuck yeah! <laughs> while while he's getting the beer, I do want to say a shout out to um, was it Evan Lepler on the call there? Um, on the play, the he had a, ultimate. It had to be. Um, yeah, he had, he had a pretty electric um, uh, call through it all. Um, I was rewatching the clip today, and I was like, this is uh, this is just entertainment right here. Mm -hmm. um i definitely want to ask him about hecklers in general i'm kind of curious like are there hecklers in the udl are there enough people in the stands like <laughs> yeah very curious to see him. all right all right boys all right all right i'm open i'm open I'm open Oh God! Let's go. I want my mom. Oh, <laughs> oh shit! That was cold. I picked a warm one for sure. Good move. <laughs> All right. Well, oh, there we go. Got that out of the way. So let's move on to actual real questions. That might sure. be a little more interesting. Uh, does anyone have a anything pressing to kick us oh, off? Oh yeah, I, I just wanted to say. Um, I think uh, getting a full picture of the, the heckler was really funny. Do you run into hecklers that often in the AUDL? Like, what's is there a lot of fan player interaction? Um, not very often. Madison is like that stadium is super cool. That was the first time I played there, and their fans were going crazy. And there's a lot of them, um, and they all know how Ultimate works, so they can actually you know heckle with some knowledge. <laughs> um but you don't get you don't get too much of that <laughs> mm -hmm. um that's a lot of fun I, I i live for that you think it like um felt like you were going into enemy territory and maybe there was some level of like home field advantage for them or do you think just the just volume of people in the stands kind of gave you a little more adrenaline like how did that affect your your play I, home field advantage is huge in the ADL. like traveling is is hard because you know you're like waking up early you're flying you're in a you're crammed in a van 
for hours. Um, and that was also the, our second day. So, you know, we're tired too. But I think everyone, everyone loves when the stands are filled, even if you're at an away game, it's just like a way more fun atmosphere to be in. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of away games, we've been trying to figure out if this has any legitimacy, but how like how tough are back to backs? Because like in college, we play four games a day on Saturday and the four games a day on Sunday. And now you go to the ADL where you only play half the points on one day and then half the points, you know, the next day. Like, but everyone says, oh, back to backs are tough. Back to backs are tough. Is is that real? Like, do you think back to backs are tough, or what do you what do you think about that? <laughs> yeah, they're they're tough. They're for sure tough. Um, like an ADL game is like is double a club game basically and you just do that all in a row and my first the first handful of games ADL games I ever played like I was cramping at the end of every one of them and that wasn't really something that happened to me in club or college ultimate even if you're playing you know seven on the weekend uh, it's it's tough and plus the other team is is fully rested unlike in the club where you're playing you're like at the same point you know mm -hmm. if you're playing your seventh game they've also played seven games you know yeah that makes sense um and then while we're comparing i'm just curious uh for you personally how do you how do you like the AUDL rules compared to the club and college rules i think it's a good it's a good idea and i like it when it works but refs aren't good yet and players are are a bit entitled when it comes to ref like everyone wants the right call and there's a lot of yelling like i've definitely yelled at refs and and pulled a few moves myself um but it keeps the game moving which is the best thing because like just standing and arguing with someone about a call for five minutes is just just ruins it for everyone and like sucks for people watching like it's unwatchable really um but yeah mm -hmm. keep it, every just moving forward is, is the best thing about ADL. yeah you, know, you get a foul called on you, you you move the yards quickly and then you go again yeah the pace of play in, in the adl is like so much better like just the fact that like when a point ends you know it's going to start in 60 seconds mm -hmm. uh with the referees what's like the most common missed call or mistake that the reps make that you just have to deal with every game um it's it seems like when if there's like two guys under a floaty disc and they have body contact then it can really go either way depending on how the ref is feeling there's that's i think the most common one and also has the biggest impact because you're deciding between like a goal or a turn almost every time and there's times where like you see a, a defender like cut in in front of the defender and they call it they pretty much give it to the offense most of the time um when you see like offenders cut in front of the defender like for body position and then fall down and then like then they give that foul to the offense and that's you know it's it's heart-wrenching for your defense um but it happens and you just gotta keep you gotta keep going <clears throat> yeah one yeah. thing i actually wonder not to cut you off sam but um kind of going off of that like um, I know in college, um, I don't know if it's like baked into the rules, but you can kind of talk with the other team about what level of physicality you're each comfortable with and kind of set the line there. So it's like, instead of having ticky tacky foul calls the whole game, you're, we're, both teams can kind of have a handshake agreement or like they can even talk to the observers and say, hey, we're both okay with like, you know, an arm here or there, like you know, when someone's cutting or whatever it may be, like, is there room for that in the AUDL? Can both teams like approach the refs and say, hey, like on a play like this that just happened in the first quarter, we're, we're okay with that level of contact. Like, does that ever happen? No, no, that doesn't happen. That, <laughs> the, it reminds me of, of, of a funny story though, where um, <clears throat> it was Roughnecks and Tampa a couple of years ago when both teams were much better. And Bobby Lay on Tampa came and told Don Smith, he's like, hey, like, just heads up, like, we're not calling integrity <laughs> integrity fouls today. So <laughs> but that's that's as much as it comes like. And you sort of know, like, is this team going to call an integrity call? Are we giving them calls that can go sort of either way? 
Um, I think that's that's really something you feel out. If you sometimes if your team feels like they've been robbed of a call, then it's it's much more likely you don't give them those calls back. You know. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I was kind of wondering since you've played both O and D line in the past couple of years, your thoughts on you know if offensive players or defensive players were getting away with more things or like what what angers you more if you're on O line and like they call something ridiculous or if you're on D line you get called for something you didn't do. Yeah. I mean the the double teams is something unique to ADL and also the person with the disc just like crashing through both players like to get a call you can get that call every every single time like i'm i'm actually i'm gonna cut you off because what i've been wanting to say is i wanted to mention how your teammate jake uh does that more than any player that i watch in the adl which so like which, jake radak yeah jake radak yeah he'll just like he'll be like okay it's time to get a new stall count let me just lean this to the mark you draw sure. a foul Hey, that's that's I admire every, it. every I great admire handler it. in the UDL is doing yeah. that. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a mark of greatness. Yeah. Yeah, I guess um we we kind of we're kind of naturally going uh this direction with Joe's question, but you've had the benefit of playing D line and O line. Um can you just kind of speak to the differences? Do you have preferences? Um I mean, obviously you alluded to maybe O-line being kind of where you wanted to be, but yeah, maybe talk a little bit about that. D-line is exhausting. It is so fucking hard. The field is huge and you <laughs> you can't put any pressure on. Like you were basically like, okay, we're gonna, we're taking away the under, we're taking away the deep, but like they get, the offense gets whatever you don't take away for free. And the offense is really easy because of that, so it's it's a bit more fun, I think, um, and you get to score a lot, which is which is fun and ultimate. But defense is exhausting, and that field is huge. And if there's a two or three turn point, you're you're just toast. Like it doesn't right. really matter how good of shape you're in, you're gonna be dead. Like it's it's tough. Yeah. Do you think there's like a way to introduce more parity? I mean, the obvious answer would be to make the fields a little bit smaller, I guess. But do you do you have any ideas like having gone through that on D-line? Um, we could become way better athletes overall. Uh, <laughs> but I'm like, I'm not I'm not that athletic. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's it's, it's a tough fun. question. It's but... huge, huge field. I'd like a smaller field. I think that would yeah. be fun like the, the club has that feeling of like it's way more intense and like there's tighter spaces there's d can actually generate something on their own um but you have to like have everything go perfect if you want to actually generate a block or someone has to make an insane play um or you need an error from the offense is like the only way you're going to get a turnover yeah it's kind of what what pavel Giannis was saying when he was on the pod too yeah Pretty much everyone we've had uh, yeah. has said that defense is extremely hard. <laughs> so it seems like maybe maybe there's a clear uh, clear uh, issue that maybe needs to be addressed. Um, I, I I remember hearing like it has something like the size has something to do with like just the ease of being able to go to a football field and just you know playing there. But I mean, I think we can I think we can make the cones a little you know. I, just, just a little play, bit. That was advocate, and also just like what we're trying to do with the sport. Like, I think the goal in the ADL is to grow it, and like with a big field, even though like it makes defense tiring, but like nobody's gonna want to like if we go like mainstream, nobody's gonna want to watch like a club game, an ADL game with like like hucks and great throws and layouts and all that shit. Like that's what's got. That's what I think is gonna make the sport more popular. Um, defense so is boring. For, Defense is boring, like, like have club be the premier, like, what it is, and then the ADL is like, all right, let's grow the sport a little bit. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah. Someone, someone was just talking about the uh, a potential, like, backcourt violation. Was that was that our, was that our guy, Ish, that, on, on Twitter? No. It was no. Sasha. It was Sasha. Yeah, it was oh, awesome. Sasha was our uh, yeah. other friend of the pod. I, I yeah. really like that. I think a backcourt would be I've, really interesting for double teams. What's the uh, what's cool. the idea with that? How to how would that really so, like put a put a line at half field and then you know once you cross half field or something like you can't 
go back. Can't go back. Or even <laughs> like multiple of them once you pass some kind of or something. Threshold. But like if you hit red zone, you can't leave the red zone. I'm imagining like you just you throw a roller out of bounds at half field, and if you can pinpoint that that line right there, you like you take away that super dump, and then that uh, would definitely bring a lot of weird defensive schemes. And but you also you don't want to like you don't want more roller pulls, you know. Roller pulls are like a good defensive strategy that that work a lot of the time and are also super boring to watch <laughs> and confuse and really confuse non ADL fans. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. But it would, you know, some kind of backcourt thing maybe would introduce some of that parity that we're looking for. But like a yeah, shot know. clock. Yeah, shot clock. Um, two point I'm, line I'm, that would be fun. What'd you say? Yeah. A two uh, point line. That's no, what I'm saying. Andrew. Yeah. yeah. Andrew's a big fan of the two point line. I'm a proponent of that. It would it would be the opposite of parity in terms of, you know, defense and offense. It would maybe widen the gap a little bit, but I think it'd be exciting. I think it would like, you know, maybe come into play more in the late game if a team's trailing, um, gives you more of a chance to come back. I think there's a lot of like do you think um do you think two points, like literally doubling the value of a point is like a good place to land? And do you what where would you have the two point line be like in a perfect world? If like you were the ADL commissioner, I think it would have to be like 60, like a 60 yard throw. Yeah. Um, it's like, that's almost the full field, only 20 yards out of the end zone. Um, I don't know if that would make, if that would give like the defense more opportunity for blocks and like, that's more, more highlights if there's more hucks and stuff like that. And then maybe if teams are like super huck heavy, they're just, you know, throwing it up, throwing it too far too often. Defense gets more chances. And then also that, yeah, that comeback thing, like what you're saying. But also like, I can also see that being back breaking when you, you know, you blow some matchup and they just get a free two pointer on you. Like that's, that that's crush, that crush some teams. Yeah. It's like that, especially also like buzzer beaters. Like if someone's throwing, if all buzzer beaters are worth two points now, mm -hmm. like that's, that's a lot of chaos because buzzer beaters are already like pretty random and have a huge impact on the game. Like if you get scored on with like 10 seconds left and your offense has to rush something for a buzzer beater and they can't get it, that's like a half break for the other team, which in those, those round up eventually. Yeah. It would also be interesting because like, sometimes you want to manage the clock and that means losing yardage and, like, I don't know, or, or sometimes it means you're just passing and you just kind of gain yardage. Like if you're a team and you're down by two and you want to have the last possession or something, but then maybe you're not in two point range. Like, I, I think it could introduce a lot of interesting things, but um, it'd be it, interesting it would, to see. Sorry, my yeah. bad, Alu, but no, no, you could, uh, if you were like up by two, if you try not to pull it that far so that they would have to like work backwards if they wanted to get the full field two pointer. Hmm. That along with weird. the backcourt violation, would <laughs> yeah, be really yeah, weird. you would just pull it like ten yards, and it's impossible to get a two pointer. <laughs> and that yeah. would be so weird, <laughs> like playing defense the opposite way. That is, yeah. <laughs> oh man, that'd be, right. that'd be yeah. All right, all right. Uh, moving on. Do we have any more questions, or do we want to get into uh, some of the matchups and some of the games this week? I want to know where the nickname came from. What does Lanky Ghost mean? How did that come up? Uh, it's it's pretty straightforward if if you saw me in, in person because I'm very tall and skinny and extremely pale. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it sounds super fitting. Yeah. <laughs> um, in in the theme of your uh, ADL uh, like uh, website player bio, um, thoughts on band slam. Um, I also saw it in theaters in 2009. Um, nice. I thought Vanessa Hudgens had a great performance. Do you have any any thoughts on on that film that you want to rattle <laughs> well, off? That's it's a terrible movie. Um, but <laughs> the, the the reason that's that's up there is for a a former soul player, now Legion player, Michael Mathis, who had a a, a line speaking line role in the movie Band Slam. Damn. No shit. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's what was the line? I have no idea. It's like <laughs> one or two lines. He he was like a he was a child at the time. Um, oh, but that's would, crazy. Does he have an IMDb page? <laughs> he might. I'm not sure. What's his name again? 
Michael Mathis. I'm I'm looking it up. Yeah, you gotta find that. We can move on. I'll I'll do the, the just look for it in the background. Um, the okay, I did want to ask a couple of questions about uh, the game this weekend. Um, sure. Since it's uh, well, I guess first question. It's sort of like a de facto playoff game against the Hustle. Yeah. Are you guys like looking at it like that? Um, and yeah, I guess are you kind of game planning like a playoff game? Yeah, like this is this is a must win if we want to con- be able to continue to guarantee our our spot in the playoffs. It's like if if we lose, we have to hope they like drop a game to Tampa or Dallas, which is likely not going to happen. Um, yeah, so this is this is like a mini playoff game, which we also had last year with Dallas. Um, yeah, everyone everyone knows the the situation. Like it's a must win. We know we've known it's been must win since losing to Chicago. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. The uh, the other thing I wanted to ask you is I I saw in the last game that Brett Holsmeyer started on you, guarding you, um, okay. and we on I don't know if you are familiar with our Twitter presence, but we have a a hunch that he is actually five foot 11. And we are trying to get the Atlanta Hustle to tweet out a photo of him next to some sort of measuring device to prove yeah. that he's actually over six feet. As someone who's played against him, can you confirm that he's 5'11", like we believe? He's, he's for sure 5'11". <laughs> okay, that's what I thought. There it is. Boys, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> if the Hustle gives us anything to clear that up, he's 5'11". Balls yeah. in your court, Hustle. Balls in your court. <laughs> um let's see yeah is there anyone on the uh on the soul you think is gonna have a especially good game i i noticed you had your best game of the season against the hustle earlier this year do you feel good going into that yeah yeah i think i'll have a good game i think everyone is is very fired up ready to go um especially getting to play them fresh and not exhausted after a close game against Raleigh, I think we're in a really good spot. Yeah. Cool. Nice. Yeah. Um, did, you, did you find anything about an IMDb page? No hits. I even did, like, I did the quotes on the name. Nothing. <laughs> Which is a travesty. If you have a speaking line in a in a movie, you got to have an IMDb. I mean, yeah. what, are we, what are we doing here? Get Michael Mathis' his IMD his IMDB page. We'll, we'll start a campaign. We'll we'll make it happen. Um, <laughs> yeah, we'll get on that. All right. Yeah. Talk games. Anyone got anything? Games. Let's talk, talk games. Some, let's talk some flat ball. There's some big games this week. All yeah. Right, yeah. Let's get into it. This is where we can get our like Skip Bayless on a little bit. You okay. Know? Like, who's not ready for Showtime? You know, let's start 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 thinking. All right, let's do it. Um, well, let's see. Ryan, you're, our, I think, our in-house gambling addict. Why don't you sort of lead this section? Yeah, so basically we're going to go through the games and you're going to say who you got and you're going to kind of say it like we, we had some issues with a previous pod where people were just talking about overs and unders and it's not really how gambling works. Um, so basically you take the final score and you either add or subtract the number on the screen to their, to the total score. So in the first game, uh, you're either going to take the Royal minus one and a half. So they need to win by two or the outlaws plus one and a half. And then that's how you would phrase it. I feel like what we did made sense, but Know, I'm me. so confused right now. With how a gambling line works, basically, basically yeah, they got we, a poker I, game coming up. This is more for this is more for me than it's veteran for you games. games. <laughs> I, 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 I was off the Ryan's upset at us, and I was listening <laughs> to the pod, and Andrew was like, "I got the the royal over," and I'm like, "I don't know what that means." So. Dude, I don't know either. <laughs> um, Let's see how but, this goes. But starting with the, with, I'll go first. I actually have money on this game, uh, so I'm gonna go with where my money's at, and I'm gonna take the Outlaws plus one and a half. Mm. So that means that you think that the Royal will not beat the Outlaws by more than one and a half, by yes. more than two, yeah, by more than two. Okay, right. I, get it. I think I get either it. it's gonna be a close game or the Outlaws are gonna win. Uh, personally, I'm gonna take the Ottawa over. 
Um, <laughs> I think with like two minutes and 50 seconds in left in the second half, it's going to be 10, seven Ottawa. Uh, and then Ottawa is going to maintain that lead by more than one and a half. So that's the team that I take. All right. Um, Andrew, who, who do you got? I think that the Royal are going to win by more than one and a half points. Gotcha. So you got the Royal minus one and a half. Yes. Yes, you do. Can I give an up? Can I give an update on the, the score? I think it'll be with two minutes and eleven seconds left in the second no. quarter. I think it'll no. be ten to eight now, Ottawa. Uh, for anyone, <laughs> for anyone who's confused, this game is happening right now. I was so confused. <laughs> Wait, is Ottawa winning? Yeah, Ottawa's oh, up Ottawa's 10 to 8. To oh, that's terrific, because I actually have, to the I end have of money the on second. them. So that's great. Okay, well, I, I was also going to pick Ottawa before I knew that. But, uh, Reese, who do you have? <laughs> oh, man. I don't know shit about either of these teams. Um, I'll take I'll take the favorites. I'll take the Royal 1.5. <laughs> right. a huge comeback. Would they be a huge it. comeback. They got it. They, got <laughs> it. they, need, to, they need to have a five-point swing. Yeah, they can do it. <laughs> They're the favorite for a reason. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Back to you, Ryan. Phoenix Back to Breeze me. rematch. Um, yeah. So this game, I have the Breeze covering minus three. I know they just beat Philadelphia on a buzzer beater, but this time it's in DC. Last week, uh, th- there was a lot of weather, which I really think affected the game. It was a really low scoring game. I think you take weather out of it, you put it in DC. I think they cover the minus three. All right. Yeah, I, I think it's really hard to, um, as someone who's never played in an AUDL game, it's really hard to go and, you know, beat a team twice in a row. <laughs> um, I, I think I think that loss was pretty demoralizing for Philly, like for DC to get that buzzer beater um, at Philly. That's tough. I think, I think if I'm on uh, Phoenix and then I have to go play them again on the road, I think that's that, that, that's got to be um, mentally kind of difficult. So I, I also had Breeze minus three. I, I think they're going to win by a little bit more than last week. Yeah, right. uh, I'm going to agree. The Breeze, despite, you know, the buzzer beater, I thought they looked pretty good. Um, I mean, there was like, it was pretty close to not even needing a buzzer beater to win that game. They had like a pretty like dumb turn towards the end of the game when they were like trying to eat a little bit of clock that led to like a, a 10 yard score for Phoenix. And I don't know, I, I felt like the breeze looked solid and did like, we're clearly not playing at their best. And I think, I think uh, tomorrow, Oh, I might be at that game tomorrow. Um, I think they'll, they'll come out stronger win by like six. Hmm. I'm going to take the Phoenix. I think people sleep on Philly. And they've been they've been close to taking one from DC and New York, and I think it's time they they finally got one. How about you, Reese? Um, I'm gonna go Breeze. Breeze th- minus three. They're supposed to be good. That's what I've heard. Mm-hmm. It's true. It's true. Um, moving on, we have two teams you're much more familiar with. Um, Hustle are heavy favorites, which makes sense. Um, but yeah, Ryan, who do you, who do you have here? I'm, I'm taking Legion plus six and a half. It's in Dallas. Hustle's got a huge game the next day. They may not, you know, go all out for it. So I'm going to give Legion the points here. Plus six and a half. Bailey, what you got? Man, it's tough. I, I remember I was looking at this before and I was looking at the score and the schedules and I had, I, I remember having a spicy take for this one, but I don't know. I, I think I'll go hustle minus six and a half. I think it'll come out hot. And uh, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know too much about Legion. Um, I guess we, we were talking in our group chat the other night. It's like their schedule has been one of the more difficult ones in the AUDL. I think the, the South division especially is like really tough. And so they're going up against the Flyers and the Hustle and Seoul pretty regularly. So like their record – Maybe they're better than their record, um, but I'll go hustle minus six and a half. Why not? I don't know. I kind of feel like 
why is the shred line six and the hustle line 6.5? I mean, I guess it's because Dallas is 0 and 7, but I kind of want to go different than you guys. So I kind of want to say um, the other way. What what do I say? Legion plus 6.5? Yeah, that's, you're, that's, you're with me. That's what I said. Ryan also said that. Oh, um, shit. Okay. <laughs> All right, I stand by it. Yeah, I'm going to go. I wish I could hear Reese's take on this first, but I'm just going to go hustle minus six and a half. Yeah, I, I, I'm Legion, Legion plus six and a half. That's a huge spread. Mm-hmm. And like, Atlanta's on the road. Um, I think they're thinking about us a little bit more. You know, you have to stay locked in for the game ahead of you because like both games are just as valuable. Um, like if they lose, if they, they fuck up against Dallas, then it doesn't matter what they do against us. Um, but still, Dallas, Dallas six and a half. That's huge spread. Like it's yeah. tough to go in, crush a team, and then stay up like throughout the the whole game. And Dallas is fighting for a win. Like I, I don't think they're gonna they're not gonna roll over. Mm-hmm. Yeah, agreed. All right, Ryan, finish off this page. Um, I have the shred minus six. I think you know you got if Joel Clinton plays, I don't know if the roster's out, but if he plays, there's no stopping that man. So I think they'll take an easy, easy six point victory here. Yeah. Oh man. See me going hustle minus six and then shred or hustle minus six and a half. I feel like I have to take the shred minus six, but it's Seattle at home, and we know that they'll probably have their good players because it's a home game. So (laughs) I'll take Seattle to cover. I'll, I'll go Seattle plus six. Sam, you go first. I want to look at the injury report. <laughs> no, no, no. You can't have more information than us. Uh, all right. I'm going to go. Information. I'm looking at the <laughs> rosters. All right. Well, that's the then advantage I of going last. Rosters. No, your time Sam, is up. You, you should have looked it up. It's, you're up. Shot clock's going. Yeah, where's all the right, club? I thought this is a professional organization here. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> um. All right. I'm going to go shred minus six. Um, you know what? No, I'm gonna go Cascade <laughs> plus six. Uh, Joel Clutton's out. <laughs> no, uh, nice. okay, well, that was my whole argument. I'm also gonna go Cascades. Uh, I think they're they're definitely better at home. Uh, their last home game, they got totally shat on by the Spiders, but uh, I'll just kind of throw that one out and then move forward. Well, that's because the Spiders are S tier, right? So yeah, they're gonna they're that's making the playoffs. They might do it. Uh, Reese, who you got? Um, I, I think I got to go Cascades. Six is just so many points. That's, it is. that's a lot to win by. Mm-hmm. And why is this just six? Why isn't it a half? Why is there no half points? Because now know. can you push? I, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Push. Okay. Is can you say I think it's gonna? I think it's gonna put like can you say that and win more <laughs> <on> money? The- <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like doing a uh, goalposts and um, uh, ride the bus. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you can you can't even bet like props in ADL. Like you can only yeah, bet it's the rough. line, money line, and spread. Um, and now we have another South Division clash of the elites. Um, we have Flyers minus six point five. Ryan, what's it gonna be? Yeah, I'm looking at the injury report, and they've got a guy named Jacob Lane on the Cannons, who mm-hmm. is Jay Lane, kind of like Josh Lane, and he's out. So I'm gonna go Flyers minus six and a half. Yeah, right. I um, when I when I was looking at this and I was trying to kind of gauge my impression, I thought similar to the last time we brought up a line. I think maybe it was a similar line, or maybe even a little bit smaller. I was like. Tampa Bay is going to cover this. And then I just looked at um, the actual outcome of that game. And uh, I'm trying to pull it up again. Yeah, I mean, we got like, um, what is it? Week nine, uh, Flyers won 23 to 15. So I got them to cover at home. I mean, I got Flyers minus six and a half. Yeah, I didn't even need to look at the injury report. I got Carolina minus six and a half, kind of for everything you just said too. Yeah, 
Um, I, I will say looking ahead, they have the Empire line higher than this, which I think you should probably just put this the line for this game as high as it can go. Um, so I'm going to pick the Flyers. That's no fun. I'm going to take Tampa Bay plus six and a half. All right. Love that. Hopefully, Love that. hopefully my favorite Florida player, Billy O'Brien, is, is in and slinging because he's going to get some goals for him. Love Love that. This. All right. I all respect right. the take. Yeah. And then you gotta, uh, I get nervous when like we all agree. I'm like, there, there's no way. <laughs> yeah. There's no way we're all right. Uh, yeah, um, we got another clash of the Titans here. We have Pittsburgh and Detroit. Ryan, who's going to take this oh one? God, five and a half point spread. If it was in Detroit, I would take Detroit, but it's not. It's in Pittsburgh, and I don't know if they're going to want to show up for this game. So I'm going to go Thunderbirds minus five and a half. I just think we look at like these spreads of shred, you know, plus or minus six. Uh, Atlanta is at six and a half. We got Flyers six and a half. Thunderbirds at minus five and a half. That's a lot. I mean, like, like it, it seems like really, really good teams can can blow you out. But um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if the Thunderbirds. I don't know too much about either of these teams again, to be honest. But I can tell I, there's you, just Matt, no way. I'm not playing. So who's not playing? Mac hacked. Okay. He's not playing. Has he played a game yet? Uh, he yes. played one. He's a he played one game that we all watched, but he's not rostered. So. Yeah, I don't know. I, I still I don't know. Thunderbirds plus five or minus five and a half. I don't think so. I, I take Detroit plus five and a half. I don't I don't think the Thunderbirds have won a game this season by six goals, and they've beat the Detroit twice by like four and by three. So. I don't know. That line seems way too high. I, I got I got Detroit, which feels good. Even though it's not picking Detroit to win, it feels good to pick them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with Pittsburgh. I think um, they looked really good last week against the Alley Cats. So and Detroit looked really bad last week, um, as they have, you know, every previous week. So <laughs> I'm going to go with Pittsburgh. Um, I'm going to take Detroit five and a half. They got AUDL all-star yards leader, assist leader, Joe Cubit out there Mm -hmm. playing the disc who I played my first AUDL game with for the Roughnecks back in 2018. He's going to, he's going to sling him to a, maybe their first win in, in years, or maybe a four point loss, but it's not. (laughs) I want to say you're the second guess we've had to shout out joe cubit we might have to get him on <laughs> i think pavel was the other one but i can't remember all right ryan can we can we change this line to like nine and a half um no. i've got some i've got some intel that i feel i should share with uh with everyone before we talk about this line i I'm don't sure. need to look at the boston roster to know that they're away None of their good players are going to be there. Oh uh, no, no, no! I've got, I've got intel from people who have friends on the un, uh, on the, on the Empire. Yeah. That uh, the Empire are playing some players this week who have not seen the field yet because they've Ooh. clinched a playoff spot already. So I had a, I had a friend, I had a friend ask for my, uh, my AUDL TV pass because they wanted to watch the Empire game this week because their buddy who has never played an AUDL game, but has played for the Empire this whole season, is getting in this week. Interesting. All right. So, With that being so. said, I'm still taking Empire minus seven and a half. <laughs> the glory on the road, like, they're, they're not even an AUDL team. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Harsh. <laughs> you look, at, look at their away stats versus their home stats and, like, their break percentage, their hold percentage. It's just, like, it's two different teams. So I'm taking Empire even with their scrubs. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Seven and a half. I mean, that's a lot. Um, even I don't know. Ottawa took took half against Empire, like, you know, not too long ago. So they're not um, you know, they they definitely have their their flaws, but the, the intel from Joe is very fascinating as well. Um uh I'm gonna take I'll take Boston. I'll take Boston to cover seven and a half points. Like they could yeah. lose by six points and it could be a blowout. And yeah. Empire right. just beat Montreal by 15. Yikes. <laughs> Locked in too late. Can't change it. 
now nah, we're good we're good I, I feel good i feel good all right joe i think i'm gonna take the empire um i mean i think that some uh some new players will play but they only have two games left i kind of feel like they don't want their stars sitting from july 1st to july 22nd so i think they'll probably get some playing time in there and you know like one quarter of their starting o-line you're already winning by eight probably so i got empire minus seven and a half um yeah i'm gonna go empire too but i don't think anything else needs to be added reese what do you got I think I think Empire. Maybe these these new people out here, they're probably hyped up playing their first game. Like they're gonna they're gonna leave it all out there. Yeah. Um and they're gonna have still a lot of good supporting players on Empire. And it's not like people don't just like take games off. It's like if, even if you have your playoff spot, people like, you know, just wanna score. <laughs> like <laughs> everyone wants to play. That's like why why we're doing all this. Um everyone wants to play some ultimate. So I think they're not gonna take it easy, even if they have that top spot. Maybe they made maybe they don't play as many points. Like the stars don't play as many points, but like when they're out there, they're gonna be playing hard. Mm-hmm. Man, am I the only one who took who took Boston <laughs> to cover? Yikes. Yep. I'm feeling not great about that. But, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with my guns. <laughs> be rooting for them this weekend. Mm-hmm. All right, Ryan. Oh man, this is a tough one. I think this, this might is, be the hardest one. This is the hardest one. Um, it's in Chicago, which I think is huge. Three and a half points. I honestly, I see, I see Chicago winning by three. So with that said, I'm going to take Alley Cats plus three and a half. Yeah, I um, I was tossing and turning all last night thinking about this line. You know, you know me. Um, you know, I'm a big Alley Cats guy. Um, first, uh, episode of the pod that we ever recorded where, uh, Pavel Giannis was apparently seething at how stupid we were not knowing about any, any of the teams. Uh, I put the alley cats very high. I had them eight tier, <laughs> um, you know, to the disdain of, of many. Um, so obviously I'm an alley cats guy, but the union are a great team. Um, I, Reese, I think you can speak to that. Um, having, having played them this season, um, they're 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 tough um and at home uh really tough to beat you know i i hate going against them but i think three and a half is a lot and i'm gonna go i'm gonna go alley cats that's my long preamble but alley cats yeah um i do couldn't couldn't sleep a wink last night because of this line it was it was devastating for my sleep cycle but i don't know on one hand like the alley cats just lost to the union by one and and pavel said that you know he thought the alley cats should have won that game and chicago has played a few pretty tight games in the past few weeks but maybe that also like you know ignites them and makes them play because like i don't think anybody doubts that chicago is a solid team even if they've been playing like a little bit iffy recently so i don't know i i kind of my heart wants to say the Alley Cats, but I kind of feel like that's enough reason for me to choose Chicago. And like, I, I would just pick the Alley Cats because that's what I want, not what I really think is going to happen. I kind of feel like Chicago is going to win by four. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm also going to pick Chicago. I just think, uh, kind of like you were saying, I think they might just be tired of people talking about how they're winning all their games by like one or two. Yeah. Um, and then they just, lost pretty bad to the wind chill so they're they're looking to bounce back uh reese who do you got um i'm gonna take i'm gonna take the alley cats plus three and a half. they just had that close game with them i mean they're they've seen now that chicago can lose like they're mm-hmm. gonna be trying to win that game yeah love sure. that yeah. we're an alley cats pod this is just further yeah. proof <laughs> all right we have another uh shred minus six and Ryan, what do you think of that? Oh, shred man. minus six. Even if, without Joel, shred minus six. They got Kerr up there. He'll be fine. Yeah, agreed. I don't think there's too much to be said. Nitro's kind of fell off a cliff. They had they had a kind of surprising start um, and some exciting players on their team for sure. But um, yeah, I got shred. 
you think uh, DraftKings looks at our tier lists and they were like, oh, uh, Portland and uh, Cascades are in the same tier. Let's make the, the lines the same. Because I kind of feel like they are. Like, why have it be six for both, not six and a half for either? I don't know. I think I got I think I got the shred in this one. Portland needs to show me something better for me to feel good about picking them for anything. Um yeah, I hate to to go along with everyone else, but I'm also gonna pick the shred. <laughs> Reese, are you joining us or yeah, let's go shred. All right. Uh, with a lot of Joel, uh, a lot of Joel Clutton talk, which I'm a big fan of. He's my first uh, captain on Tough, or one of them. Oh wow! I spent awesome. spent years trying to catch a, a sky ball over him, and it's just it's just an impossible. Yeah, nobody's impossible. ever done it. No one's done it. Yeah, so, I've got a I've got a speed question for you, and then we'll just quickly move on. Joel Clutton, Henry Ferrada, pick one. Oh man, does do I get like any details? It position no no situation at all. No. Just one. <laughs> I'm gonna take. I'll take Joel. Love that answer. Love Henry that doesn't answer. even do anything anymore. He's he's out there playing Denver B League pickup whatever. Whoa whoa whoa! We're undefeated. We're undefeated. <laughs> Me and yeah, Henry, Henry played- is my actual teammate on Double Wide this year. So Henry and I played cornhole today, and he beat me. So he's he's getting some success. He's a competitor right there. He yeah. doesn't, just doesn't give a shit about ultimate. <laughs> he's a great he's a great drinker. He averages like one beer at four o'clock every day. So it's great. Yeah. <laughs> Just expose it on the pod. <laughs> he doesn't listen. He doesn't listen. We're good. We're good. Okay. All right. Not Moving many on people to, do. To the next game. The next game. Um, Windchill Radicals. Uh, is this game? Is this the official game of the week? Are we no, not going to no, be able no. to watch this? Shred Nitro oh, is man. the game of the week. Oh, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Reese, do you know about the game of the week stuff? I, I've heard of the game of the week. So it's on Fox Sports One, and yeah. you can only watch it like two hours after the game's already happened. I, I know, I'm, I'm familiar with that problem. Um, I don't know there was there was some talk they might move it to our game. Um, I guess they're not, but I really hope that would not. suck. Yeah. Well, I will say I will watch after the fact, but they it's, they it's hard for. Yeah. I think they might have heard our, our cries um, last week because um, the Hustle Flyers game was the game of the week, I believe. Or no, maybe it was – was it just like the Friday feature? Or no, it was the game of the week, right? I, I went on Fox Sports' website, and I, I watched like part of it with their like free uh, – they give you like an hour. So I did I did watch some of it live. Um, but I don't know. I don't, I don't know what they're doing out there. I feel like it's, it's like that uh, – yeah, I don't know. We're still right. figuring out the game of the week thing. Anyway, right. I got Winchell. <laughs> you got Winchell. I, I'll go yeah. with you. I got Winchell minus four and a half. Yeah. I got Madison. I feel like that's a bad choice because Winchell just won by 11, but I don't know. It's in Madison. I'm, I, I don't know. Maybe the wind conditions are, are going to favor the radicals this week. I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I don't, I don't really have too much reasoning. I'm going to be honest, but I'm just feeling feeling madison rascals all right i'm gonna go wind chill uh because as you mentioned they just beat uh the radicals by 11 not too long ago <laughs> uh reese there i'm gonna take madison they're playing at home that's the best that's the biggest home field advantage in the udl and no no team loses by 11 and just you know goes back to business as usual like you gotta you gotta come back hard unless you're losing to um, unless you're a Canada team losing to Empire by whatever 15 every day, mm-hmm. but yeah, this isn't that. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a rivalry game, so definitely is. Just just by watching those games, it feels different. So, mm-hmm. all right, quick, now we got the big one. Quick question, Reese: Do you guys feel like you should be favored in this game? I was wondering. I didn't know if we were going to be favored or not. I, I mean, I think we're going to win. Like, <laughs> you know, yeah. I think that's a fair line. Um, I, but, this is tough. So I really thought this game should have been a pick 'em, like you know, maybe half a point or something. But I also think y'all are going to win. Um, I mean, you guys are the only ones to beat uh, Raleigh slash Carolina this year, so that's got to be count for something. But yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I think Seoul minus one and a half. I think you guys got this. But I think it's going to be a close game. I don't think Hustle's going to give up. Um, yeah. But Seoul minus one and a half. Two-point game. Yeah, part of me is like, do I suck up to Reese because he came on the pod? Or do I go with my gut? And the good news is that my gut is that you guys win by – more than one and a half so i don't have to make that choice <laughs> so i got i got i got you guys uh winning uh, you guys beat uh raleigh at home earlier this year um yeah i don't know we talk about the madison home field but you know the austin austin home field maybe there's something to be said there um yeah i think you guys I think you guys win by uh more than one and a half me too me too um yeah i'm gonna say like the thing that has impressed me most about the hustle this year is like probably their hucks and like the efficiency that they can do it with. And I just kind of feel like that's not enough to make me pick them in like a very close game. And like they're, you know, they're exciting to watch when they, they throw it, you know, 50 yards all the time, but I don't know. Maybe that's easy to do when you're playing a bunch of teams that don't have any wins. So Against the soul, I got the soul. All right. Yeah. I'm taking hustle uh one and a half. <laughs> yeah, this is this is gonna be a fun one. Like, I mean, if if I was re-watching the film from our first hustle game and like in that game we felt like we were gonna win. It was it was like a couple late errors caused us to lose, and the same thing with the Raleigh game. Like it's so close. Like even games that you see teams lose by, you know, two to four points, like there's such small margins and then you have to like risk it all in the, like the last two minutes of the fourth that sort of happened in our first hustle game. Like we had like these, a couple like clutch late stalls for the hustle on when we were on offense. And an interesting thing about the hustle refs is that they don't hand count they count in their heads. They count the stall in their heads, which is mm. something I've only encountered at the hustle. And like, it's fast. It's always a fast stall. Um, learning how other teams refs ref is is a part of the AUDL, and we know how our home team refs ref. Um, we're a bit call happy, I think. Like, there's be a lot of fouls, a lot of travel calls, um, but no quick stalls. Like, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, and also credit to the hustle, like Austin Taylor is like one of the best players in the AUDL. Like he's an MVP caliber player and like trying to limit him is going to be a huge, huge part of the game. I think, um, dealing with Atlanta's zone, that's huge. Um, but yeah, these, these, these games can go either way. I think we're going to win, but I always think I'm going to win. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. I think I think that's the right mentality. Um, yeah, I think uh, we we were very stat heavy in the, our first few episodes, um, and we've gone away from that a little bit. But I do want to throw out there for uh, in terms of break percentage. I mean, you guys are extremely evenly matched with the hustle in a lot of metrics. I think they're sixth in break percentage in the league, and you guys are seventh. Like hold percentage, I think you guys are like um, just maybe a couple. Not oh wait, where are we at here? I don't know. They're, um, Huck percentage is where they have you guys kind of in the most uh, most distance between. They're first in the league in Huck percentage. So, yeah. you know, you probably know that better than me. You're going to be watching out for those Hucks. Um, but you guys are very evenly matched. Um, it's going to be a great game. Um, and I think now at this point in the season, we have a little bit more of a sample size as well. So some of these mm-hmm. statistics are a little more meaningful. But, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, I'll just uh, I'll throw in. I'll throw in my pick. I'm going to go with the soul also, um, shockingly. But I think, uh, you know, maybe next season, if Brett Holzmeier comes back, he's maybe eclipsed six feet next year. Mm-hmm. Maybe then we're talking about the hustle taking this game. But uh, as things stand with Brett at 5'11", the soul at home, the hustle on a back-to-back, I'm going to go with the soul minus one and a half. How do, how do you, Reese, how do you think you're going to fare without having a uh, Radic in? Um... I think we'll be all right. I mean, we didn't have him all last season, and Eric Broadbeck was in that role all the time. He's gonna be he's gonna be back on the O line, and he's gonna be you know tearing it up. Like he's real good. I or we just like looked at our roster, 
our, our lines earlier today, like I, I'm feeling very confident. Like we have no weak spots in our roster, even missing uh, Radak and Vinay, who are like you know have been key O line players for us all season. And Atlanta is missing Matt Smith and John Stubbs, who are like huge, huge plays for them on offense and defense, just everywhere. Like not having to deal with those guys is is great for our defense because then we can spend more time, you know, covering Austin Taylor or Bobby Lay, like dealing with them more. Mm-hmm. For sure. Oh. Real quick, I we've heard the story of you and Ryan meeting at the Summit Game from Ryan, but I'd love to hear it from your perspective. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Henry Fruta, we went up to visit him and watch Joel Clutton's. I can't, I can't believe I went to an ADL game on my bye week. That's ridiculous. Also watching Colorado because <laughs> I, I hate Colorado. Like, oh. <laughs> um, and then Henry introduced me to his, his office friend who has played Ultimate before, and he was talking about all this stuff about Ultimate. Like, damn, this guy doesn't know anything about Ultimate. And I was the one, and I was screaming. I was screaming for Joel and the Shred. Um, and that was a super fun game, like super close, like almost had one of the craziest end of end of game situations I've ever seen. Um, MVPs just walking out of bounds, <laughs> and, and <laughs> time. crazy. Um, that was a lot of fun. He was he was buying ten dollar beers and making fun of me for not buying ten dollar beers at the stadium. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a good time. Sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah, that game was fun to watch um, from an outsider perspective as well. I, I said before, I feel like maybe my best take of the year so far was I said it would be like that Monday night uh, game where the um, it was like Chiefs and Rams or whatever, and it was like the final the score total was like over a hundred or some shit like that, and it, it very much felt like that. It was a fun game, so I'm seething with envy that you guys were able to see in person but yeah that was my first was that my first ever ADL game yeah it was, it was been, yeah. first game it was my first ever ADL first game, game and I was so drunk and I was just like <laughs> trying to like you know, you know yeah. like juggle like hanging out with Henry and his friends also watching ADL also being drunk and all that but I had a great dollars night. for I beers ruin your guys's college <laughs> trip. Um, that was but, funny it was a funny time and then we went back to Henry's parents' place and played some drinking games there, so that was good. Yeah, nice, nice. A whole right on. All right, well, uh, yeah, thanks for giving us an hour of your time before your uh, your poker game. I know you have to probably take some time to lock in. Yeah. Um, Very good. But, yeah, thanks for thanks for coming on. Yeah, y'all, y'all have really had a, a steep drop-off in the quality of uh, guests. You have from... <laughs> Jordan Kerr to oh. Pavel to me, like, he's really down, really down fast. No, come don't, on. Don't, don't sell yourself you, come on. You were the first friend of the pod. <laughs> so yeah, I feel like that's, that's big. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah, no, I, th- I, think you're, I think you're definitely selling yourself short. You definitely have possibly the celebration of the year, although we also had Seth Ferris on, and his, like, funky, like, disc thing was pretty sick. But I think you got him there. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. So, yeah. Don't 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 uh, don't sell sell yourself short and and thanks for coming on and, and good luck uh, good luck this weekend and good luck the rest of the way. Um, mm-hmm. I think you guys are gonna be in the playoffs and be fighting there, so we'll be rooting for you for sure. So, so, if, you're, if, you're, if the soul ever traveled to Colorado and I'm still here, I got a poker table and some chips, and I would love to host again. All right, we'll put that we'll put in that for a cross divisional game for next season. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's yeah. good. Yeah. All right, Reece. thanks, Reese. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thanks, man. Boom. Well, that was Reese Bowman. He was open. He was open. He, was the, he gets open. Oldest, oldest friend of the pod. Is that what we're saying? I still I have some so. beer. He's, I was cheating. He's got to be the first friend. You didn't finish your beer during that chug? No. Exposed. Oh, Exposed. I had an IPA. And that's, and, dude, that's tough. That's, I had an IPA too. Yeah, but uh, you're better at chugging than me by far. We know this. Guess that's fair. Can <laughs> we, uh, warm, can we... warm PBR. See, I would have finished we, that. Can we clip us uh, all chugging for Twitter, but like not like a before or after, just like four seconds of straight chugging and like no sounds? <laughs> so we had Reese Bowman on the pod, so you know what that <laughs> means. <laughs> um, he was great, man. Yeah, it was cool to meet him. It's funny because like we bring these people on, and I have 
I don't know anything about these people. I don't know how you guys find these people and how we get them on. But like, <laughs> you'll be like, oh, we'll have like, you know, Jordan Kerr on today or like, oh, we'll have Reese on today. And I'm like, shit, all right, I guess I'll meet this person so, for the first time. It, since- I think every single pl- person we've had on, it's except for like Pavel, who like we like, it was like a conversation where it was like, yo, come on the pod. And he's like, okay. And then we reached out like, all of them, we just like, like I hit Seth up on Facebook Messenger. I wasn't even friends with him on Facebook. And like, I told uh, Henry to like, you know, text uh, Reese if he was interested. And Henry was like, yeah, he'll let you know if he's not interested. And he was interested. So like, nice. we could just start reaching out to like, literally, we should like, I mean, Marquez is like someone we'll never get. <laughs> we'll like, work our way someone, out. Like we're, we should like, just like reach for the stars and see if we can get someone interesting for sure. If you're, if you're in the AUDL, Ryan will slide into your DM. So oh, watch yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, we should get your uh, your friend's friend on the Empire. Oh yeah, I'll ask. I'll ask for his number. I'm sure he would. Uh, he would be willing to interview with us. Just like, are we not? We're who's not like saying never played before. <laughs> and we just we're not saying our sources. We're not saying our so, sources I mean, on if air. We want a friend of the pod, Matthew Stevens. He likes a lot of our stuff on Twitter, so maybe he'd be sure. Uh, speaking of people who like our stuff on Twitter, James Pollard since like the beginning has been like yeah. our stuff on Twitter and he he's is so like, good. <laughs> he's so good. I, I, I can see him maybe wanting to come on. I have no idea, but if Philly, listening now. if Philly beats the breeze, I'm going to reach out. Yeah. That would have been a good, say, yeah. I'm going to say mean stuff about Philly. If they beat the breeze and he goes <laughs> on our pod. Yeah. So yeah, Joe, yeah, just stuff. go to the game and uh, ask him. To come I'll on. ask him. I'll ask him. Yeah. 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 Go to the game. Uh, we got to get you a shirt. Uh, I know. Oh yeah, I have in my closet. Oh, yeah. I gotta send them out. So that was Reese Bowman of the Austin Soul, and this has been another episode of I'm Open. I'm, I'm open. open. I'm open. We didn't and, get him to uh, say I'm open, did we? No, he said the start. He did. Himself. The start. He did. Thank. He was open. God. He was open. Easy. I, we can do, we can do this next time. You can stop recording if you want, but we should. Oh uh, my. Well, hold on. I gotta we cue the uh, cue the outro music. Put in outro music here. They didn't ask him who his rookie year favorite is.